I thank you for the gifts, dear God, and the word that you have given us today. I thank you for the worship and the devotion of the worship team. God, I thank you that you're in our midst today, Lord. I thank you that your sweet Holy Ghost is in this place, Lord. We give you complete control of the remainder of this service, God, that I would speak life, not death to your people, God, that I would speak what you would have spoken. Lord, anoint me, even though I may not be worthy of your anointing. Anoint me today, dear God, to speak what you would have spoken. God, I pray that you move on your people in a mighty way. God, that true revival, true repentance would be poured out, Lord, and that there would be a fire that begins in sweet home Oregon that sets ablaze to the Pacific Northwest, and God, that it would travel across the United States of America. Lord, I pray right now for our government and for our country, Lord, that you would come, dear God, and stir their hearts and draw them unto you, God, oh, as you and only you can do give him praise in the house give him praise in the house glory 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 you can be seated glory hallelujah thank you sweet holy ghost thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you good to have margie marshall with us i've said that a couple of times but we love her to death her husband was a a mighty tower of God, and and uh, I know why, because the anointing on her is just the same, and that's such a beautiful and blessed thing to have. Um, this morning during first service, I'm going to tell you, I got I got uh, delivered of some things, uh, which was amazing for me. I love it. God blessed me and, and took care of me this morning, but while I was preaching this morning, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me, and, and I don't know if you've ever been up here, but here's kind of what happens sometimes is that uh, you're trying to speak and he's speaking and you're trying to listen and talk. And so sometimes it's better if you just stop and let him speak. So over the last few months, I've told you and, we, and we've talked about that God's going to pour out his spirit on this church. And, you know, we know that. And some would say, well, where are all the miracles? Well, here's the reality. God is pouring out his spirit and people are beginning to hear his voice and it's birthed like this. And when they begin to move in what he speaks to them, then everything changes because all of a sudden we're not walking in the authority of Mark or, or uh, Sarah or Tim. We're walking in the authority of God. So things change. So this morning I was up here and to be honest, I didn't know Miss Tina was in the building and uh, I was preaching and the anointing was heavy and the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, uh, well, you know what? I don't even actually remember how he said it, which is good because then I know it wasn't me. Miss Tina, come on. She's going to share a testimony, and then I'm going to share one about hearing God's voice speak to us. So uh, do you need a mic? Yeah, let me grab you one. You've got a big voice. Go ahead. Short. <laughs> yeah, um, 
are hindering, I know God is going to do something, and that's what I believe. Amen. So this is an example of hearing the voice of God speak to you. While I was preaching, the voice of God spoke to me. The Holy Spirit spoke. I shared what he said, and, and then I moved on with what, I, what God had showed me to do. And then, but God would, needed me to do that so she could receive from that. When you hear the voice of God and you don't walk in the voice of God, you're not only hindering yourself from growing, you're hindering those around you that need to hear what God has given you. And so the reality of that is sometimes we walk in the flesh, but we need to be cautious and hear the voice of God because sometimes when we miss it, things go crazy. So some of you have heard this before, but before I preach, I'm going to share another one of those. People say I'm crazy. I'm radical, right? I'm I'm one of those guys that's I, I'm the Joshua and the the Joseph Joshua and Caleb. I'm not the other ten that are not mentioned, because I'm the one that says, you know what, believe beyond limits. And others, you know, want to 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 say, well, the negative world's crashing around us, and 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 that's not what God called me to do. So God had called me to preach out of alcoholism, and again, some of you have heard this. And my friend's name was Willie. I was 44 years old, and we had drank together, rode rail buggies and drank together for about four years, partied. And I'm driving from Cleveland back to Ottawa, and I'm driving by his shop. And God said, stop and tell him I love him. As clear as I'm talking to you. And I said, God, I can't. I can't send someone else. I can't. And God said, I want you to tell him I love him. And I said to God, I'll tell him Thursday when I come back to see my mom. This was on Tuesday. I got to Ottawa and I went ahead with my day. And I got a call that Willie had stepped out in his yard and fell over dead with a massive heart attack. Thursday didn't come. And while God forgives me of my sin, he gave me a direct thing to do. And I chose not to listen to the voice of God. There's not a day goes by that I don't hear the name Willie. And I can't go back and fix that. So if you think I'm crazy and radical, if God tells me to stand up here and scream at the top of my lungs, I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs because I am not going to miss what he tells me to do again if I can help it. Church, there is an army right here that can take this city or we can wallow in the pity of our problems. And it is time that we pull up our bootstraps in these last days, start hearing what God says do, and then go and make it happen. Hearing the voice of God. We've been sharing testimonies, different people. I'm sure someone will call me this week, and we'll have more testimonies next week because it's been happening for the last couple of months. But I wanted you to hear that this morning. Don't miss what God has. Don't miss. Because what you don't want to do is have regrets that you can't ever come back and fix. And when I stand before God, you know, I pray that someone got to him that day. I pray the Holy Spirit got to him. Moving on. Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. I know we're late, but God's good and it's okay. We won't be longer than a ball game, right? Any of them on TV. Mark chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. Stand with me, if you will, for the reading of God's Word. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that he might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, it is lawful to do good on the, 
Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when they had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel. And the Herodians again against him, with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Miss Wendy, will you bless the reading of the word? Amen. You can be seated. God gave me this scripture this week. I began to study it, saw some things in there I hadn't seen. Obviously, this is a story of the Pharisees trying to trap Jesus. Let me make this clear. I spent about an hour last night with Sterling around 8 o'clock, between 8 and 9 last night, and we talked about this. The enemy will always come against you when you're moving for God. The enemy will always come against you when you're moving for God. There will always be somebody. The music's too loud. The music's too soft. This isn't right. It's too. There's always somebody somewhere going to come against you. Put on your big boy britches. Shake the chips off your shoulder and let's move forward for the kingdom of God. It's time that the body of Christ begins to rise up. Christ understood that. This is part of what this story is about. This story is also about God healing a man. This story is about many, many things. But what I want you to see today, and again I will try to be brief, but I want you to see some things today. Look at verse 3, and this is the first time I actually caught this in verse 3. And he says, and he said unto the man which had the wizard hand, stand forth. Imagine this is you. You basically are an outcast. Your hand is shriveled up. You're an outcast. You're not flawless. Nobody wants you around. And the first thing that Jesus says to the man is come up front. The first thing that Jesus says to the man is, step forward. Take a stand. Move forward. And I, I can just picture this guy going, I don't want to go up there. I've got this flaw. This isn't good. This isn't right. I don't want to be because I'm not even supposed to. I'm a spectacle. I want to stop for just a second. Every one of us, if we'll admit it, want to give our best side. We want everybody to see the best in us. Even our God. We want it to be our very best. We want him to see the best that we have to offer. But Jesus wasn't reaching out to the best that the man had to offer. He was reaching out to the weakest point in this man's life. He was literally reaching out to the man's flaw. And he was saying, God incarnate through the flesh, Jesus Christ was saying, I'm not looking to make your best better. I'm looking to make your weakest link your strongest link. And he said to the man, stand forth. See, if you want to know the truth about this story, it's not even about the man with the withered hand. There you go. <laughs> Why did God, through Jesus, have him stand forth? Be huh? It's about them. It's about them seeing. When I give God my very best, the best that I have to offer and I hide the other stuff in the background actually you know what I'm doing I'm not promoting God I'm promoting Mark but what Christ wanted to promote that day was not how talented this man was or how amazing his not he wanted to promote him his healing power so he brought him up in front of everyone can I say this to some folks today? There's things in your life that are holding you back. Maybe that's fear. Maybe that's anxiety. Maybe that's lust. Maybe it's sin. Maybe it's a withered hand. And we want God to see the very best that we have. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For some, it's pride. For some, the enemy has convinced Miss Donna not for you, but your family. The enemy has convinced them with shame. 
Because the enemy says, you're not good enough. The enemy says, you've got a flaw. You've got a glitch. You can't be used of God. You can't come back because... The, and the enemy begins. And the body of Christ is trying to put forth its best effort. And Christ is trying to draw out of us the worst in us. So that he can heal it. Fix it. Make it whole and set us forward. Amen. Jesus says, come up front. I want everybody to see. And he didn't say, show them your good hand. He didn't say, show them your pretty smiling face. Christ said, I'm going to take the weakest link that you have. Stretch forth your hand. And I'm going to make it just like the other. Right? If you run really, really fast, but you don't climb so well then just don't practice climbing, right? Because that's, you know, a, a rabbit can run, but he can't swim. So don't put him in the water. God said, I'm not looking at how fast you can run. I want to fix what's broken in you. Now stop for just a minute and think about this. What happens when your withered spirit, your withered body, your withered soul it's loosed. I'm free. I can, I'm free. And all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, when, this, when God does this, the enemy's going to come against you. Get over it. People are going to come against you. Get over it. All of a sudden, the weakest link in this man's body. Christ said, come here. I want to set you free from that bondage. Think about this this morning. What happens for those of you that have the negative spirit? You're always going to see the, the negative of everything. The glass is half empty. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen? The glass is half empty. The glass. You're going to drink the other half and refill and it's going to be okay. What happens if God released you from that negative spirit? The problem is, we want to hide it. We want to, you got an undershirt on? Yeah. <laughs> okay, making sure. We want to hide the things in us that aren't perfect. We want to hide the, when we have malice against our brother. We don't want anybody to know that. But you know what? If they go to this church, I ain't going anymore. I ain't going to that church. There's too many hypocrites there. That's why you should be there. God is looking for the worst part of you to heal. God is looking for the worst part of you to set free. Go ahead, you can sit down. Thank you. Give me my hand. John chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. John chapter 8. I'll give you two seconds while I get a drink to go there. Verse 1 says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Where's the other person? If she's caught in the act, I'm pretty sure there was a second person. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that he might have to accuse him. That they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger he wrote on the ground, and thou he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. 
She was called out to the front. When Jesus had lifted up himself, verse 10, and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The enemy comes to us and says that that thing inside of you, for some it's fear. It literally is fear. Fear is overtaking you in an area of your life, and you'd rather just put that aside and live with it and deal with it. For some, it's anger. For some, it's other things. For some, it's nothing to do with sin at all. It's just a withered hand, but you don't want the world to see those things about you. And Jesus is saying, the world is just as bad as you are. There's nothing in you that's any worse than anyone else. No one has authority to bind you up unless you allow them to. Christ literally said to this woman, you are free. And yet God's people come and go bound without allowing God to loose them. Because if we show what's going on, if we show what's going on, then someone might think less of us. If I show them my withered spiritual hand or my withered emotional hand, and Jesus said, step forth and straighten out your hand. This morning, and I told you I'd be brief, this morning in first service, I shared with them, and I know we're not supposed to do this. But I shared something with them. Not a sin in my life, but a weakness. I can have 15 people today, probably won't, but I could. Tell me amazing service. I learned so much today. Thank you. God just touched my life. And I'll get one negative report. And I'll run with that negative report. And I'll feed that monster. And this morning during first service, I shared with them. See, this isn't sin. What this is is, oh no, there's a storm coming. i got to tell the world the sky is falling. No, it's a little thunder and a little lightning. The sun will come back out tomorrow. God's still God. And what God showed me and set me free from this morning is literally set me free. I was like jumping when we started service because I was set free. Because worried about what the one person that doesn't like me, the one person that I've made mad, trust me, there's more. Some of them just don't say anything. Jesus made people mad. We're not all going to agree on everything. But this is what I know that the Lord told me to tell you. Some of those things are hindering you moving forward. You spend three days worried about what one person said. Or what the doctor said. Or what the enemy said. or what, And you begin to meditate. You begin to chew on. And your hand spiritually becomes withered. And God is wanting to loose you. He didn't come to make your best parts better. He come to make your worst parts healed. And and good so that he can be glorified isn't it funny that he didn't come and get the best disciples he didn't meet the best Pharisee on the road to Damascus he met the one that was killing Christians the most rotten snake in the grass that there was and he said hey why are you fighting me It's time for the men and women in this room this morning to take those little ugly things in our life. For some, maybe that's lust. I don't know. It doesn't matter what it is. It can just be a withered hand. But you can say, God, I want you to take this thing. And as a pastor, they tell us not to tell them your weaknesses. I'm telling you my weaknesses. 
I believe everybody out there that says something negative this afternoon will be about me. And they could be talking about the neighbor's cat. But it is a weak link for me. It was. Until today. God wants to loose on you today the power to get rid of the things that are holding you back. Did you say that means there won't be anything ugly? You read the wrong book. Because the book said ugly's coming. But he said, step out. If we really are a hospital for hurting souls, then why do we try to put our best foot forward? And I'm not talking about wallowing in pity. You know me. I don't play that game. I'm going to pray with you, expect God to do it. You know, Miss Uwe said uh, that she came out of thyroid surgery and her, her blood pressure was all whacked and her sugar was all whacked and all those things, so we all prayed. She comes back and says, God leveled it all out. What did, wait, what did you expect? You ask him, that's what you expect him to do, is what you ask him to do in accordance to his will. How do I know healing's in his will? Because he took stripes for it. Well, what about all healing? I don't know. It's not my department. My department is to pray and believe. It's up to him the results. Mark, you can't make the results. I can't make the results. But he can make the results. But I know today, by the Spirit of God, that there are people in this room that are holding something. And it literally is a withered hand to you. And God said, I want to set you free. I want to set you free. And how he's going to do that is this. By faith, you're going to take a step forward. And you're going to say, you don't even have to tell me what it is. In fact, to be honest, I don't need to know. But if you went to him and said, hey, There's at least one or two people here that your withered hand is you're lonely. You're lonely. You may have people all around you, but you're lonely. And it is hindering your next step with God. And he says he wants to fill that void with his presence. And he want, and see, I can't make you come, but I can tell you what he said is that if you're the one that's lonely, he wants to fill you with peace and with joy and let you know that everything is going to work and that it's going to be okay. He's got this. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be a season that you're going to remain without. But it does mean he can give you peace to carry through. And he wants to solve that for you. With the woman with sin, he saved her. For the man with the withered hand, he said, stretch forth. And I'm going to make you this promise. With God as my witness, when God's people are loosed from the power of the enemy totally, we are freed to see a lost and dying world come to Christ. But as long as we're in bondage of sorts, we're never going to be as free as we need to be to see what God will do. Well, I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing. I can't sing either, but you know what? God told me today, told me this week. If that's a weak link for you, why don't you give it to me and let me work on it? You see... I take the things that are weak and I hold them as if it's a precious baby, as if it's a withered hand. And I make it more valuable than the God that can solve the problem. And he said, step up. I want to make you whole. I don't want you to have weak links. Through me, you have strength. Through me, you have anointing. 
Through me you have power. What's holding you back this morning? What is the weakest link in your life? What is it that has literally bound you up? What is it? What's the worst part of you? It's time God's people begin to take their withered hands to God. And we begin to be loosed. And we begin to see the power of God in our entire lives. Come on, is this making sense to anybody? We're holding on to lost children as if we can save their souls. We're holding on to whatever it is. And we're not trusting God. And Jesus told the man, come up here so the world can see. Because when I give my best, they're seeing Mark. I don't want them to see me. But when I step forward and show you my weaknesses and lay out for you that God can deliver even an old wretch, that God can change me, he can change you. He can set you free from a negative spirit that some just embrace I didn't say he'd change the situation I said he would stretch forth that withered hand and he would loose his anointing on you your husband spoke over my life and I'm going to close with this probably heard me say it before because I some memory burned in standing right there altars were full it was crazy it was a packed house that day and I preached a message from Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8 I believe or chapter 8 verse 1 I'm not sure and he came to me and said what about your part what about your part of this he said you've prayed over everybody in the house what about your part I said, what are you talking about? He said, you know what I'm talking about. And he laid hands on me and I hit the floor and I couldn't get up. And it wasn't one of those, I mean, I was down there and I wasn't getting up until the Holy Spirit was done. And the Holy Spirit said, you don't trust me. And I said, I moved across country. I trust you with everything. He said, you don't trust me with you. And I proceeded to tell him how much I trusted him. And here's what he said to me. Laying right there, your husband spoke this word over me. I'll never forget it. Your husband spoke over me. The Holy Spirit hit me. And the Holy Spirit said, You only trust me to do what you think you're capable of doing. I said, I'm pastoring. I'm doing everything I know to do. I'm on the region. I don't know what else to do. He said, Trust me with you. And then he read the rest of the scripture to me. He said, I'm giving you the land from the sea to Lebanon. From the north to the south. And what did I say? God, I, 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 I. But you know what we're watching happen? He wants to take that hurt away from you. You know the one that you've carried, you don't know how to live without? You know that one that's been in there for so long that it's part of who you are? He wants to take that loneliness away. And fill you with joy. He wants to meet every need for you. But here was what he told. The man with the withered hand. He said step forth. And stretch out. So here's my altar call today. First of all. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I know that's. Some might think none of us do, and that may be true at times. If you don't know Christ, you come find me, and I will pray with you to receive Christ. But if you've got something in you that's a weak link, 
whether that's worry, whether that's strife, whatever it is, loneliness, then it's time to bring that withered hand to God and turn it over to Him and let Him be the master and commander of it. Stand with me, if you will. Father, I presented the word. I pray that I presented it the way that you would have me to. But I know this is the word you gave me, Lord. So therefore, I stand on the word. I've seen what you can do. I know that today there are people here that need to let go. I also know there's some that will not. And God, I can't change that but you can stir their hearts and I pray today that freedom reign in this place that God's people be loosed from shame and anger and anxiety and fear and withered hands and everything that the enemy would use to tear down the body of Christ that we be loosed in the name of Jesus and that the power of God would reign in our lives and that we would hear your voice clearly and we would act on what you've spoken so there would never be. I saw that there would never be a situation where we can't go back. That we would move in what you have for us to move in. And God, in doing so, I claim the families of this body. I claim this city and this community and this country for Christ. Meet the needs of your people. This altar is open. We will pray with anyone that wants to come.